You just mentioned AJ there. He's due to face Kubrat Pulev again. I know it's only a mandatory and he has to take that fight. For a lot of fans, and obviously because AJ appeals to such a huge casual market, there was some natural disappointment, but it's like I say, it's a mandatory, it can't be helped. What are your thoughts on, on their fight when he does take place? Um, I think AJ has shown a massive improvement in, in the rematch. Um, so I think going in against someone like Pulev, yeah, I think he realised um, in, in his loss that he had to make a lot of improvements up until that point he'd never had to make any adjustments or changes to his style because what was working worked really well whereas he realised that he had to make adjustments he started to start using his boxing brain more um, but I think Pulev's style is made for the old AJ I think you know that stand up Eastern European upright um, stance he's made for someone of, of that style so AJ going in with a bit more smartness and, and cuter skills I think could be a dangerous aspect for um, for someone like Pulev I think he'll look explosive I really do um, I, 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 to be honest with you I don't I don't see the fight going past sort of three or four rounds I think AJ will sort of easy with easy way he can get his jab going get his time and a distance and then I think he'll get him over the top with that big straight right hand. That's, uh, I think the fight's made for him. And another guy you did mention earlier on, Tyson Fury. We haven't had a chance to speak about it since uh, his victory over Deontay Wilder. Just to touch on it, what was your thoughts on his seventh round victory? I thought it was unbelievable. I really do. I think there's those performances every now and again where they come out of the blue and nobody expects the fighter to, to perform the way they did. Um I still, I still really can't believe the um, audacity of him to to have gone in there and jumped down Deontay Wilder's throat and pushed him onto the back foot. It just, even now, I can't understand <laughs> his confidence in going, do you know what? I'm going to throw caution to the wind. I'm going to come on the front foot, keep it long, but, but apply that pressure. Because... You know, common sense to me keeps going. Well, listen, you still got to be cautious because Wilder's that big a puncher. You can't take those risks. You've got, you know, maybe after a couple of rounds when you took the sting out of him, then you can start changing onto the front foot. But don't do it from the offset. So for him to have the confidence in his own ability to do that is just unbelievable. And every time I've watched it about six times now, and every time I sort of have a smile on my face going, oh God, I can't believe you've done that. You know, he's, he, he's, but I saw a smile and go, he's just brilliant. He's just, he's probably the only thing Wilder didn't expect him to do. Even when he said it to him so many times, every time he said it, he must have thought, he'll never do that. There's no way he'll do that. And he did. He was just amazing. And um, I think in great performances always get better with time. You know, people start to appreciate him more. Um, I always use Lennox Lewis as an example as a fighter. And I don't think we truly appreciated how great a fighter he was until hindsight sort of kicked in. And then as time goes on, you start to appreciate him more. I think that performance by Tyson Fury in, in as time goes on, it'll get better and better and people start talking about it for years to come. I mean, after the fight, obviously Deontay's come out, he's said he's going, he want the ice, but he has re, um, he has invoked that rematch clause, I'm, I'm losing my word in here, Jamie. Um, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Do you think Walder has a chance in the third fight or do you expect but more don't of forget, that? Don't forget, it was all down to the suit. Yeah, there's going to be another so, question, so you brought so, that up. So I'm, not, so I'm not surprised he's, he's kicked in a rematch clause because all he's got to do is not wear the suit for the ring walk, and that's it. He's made the fight easy, hasn't it? So, um, but yeah, I mean, listen, I don't blame him. I think, I've got to be honest, if I was Wilder, I'd be saying to Bob Arum, listen, do me another contract saying that Tyson Fury can have a fight in between and he's got to fight me in the rematch or I'm going to invoke the rematch clause because nobody really wants a rematch but if they have to 
I'll make it happen. Because they, they don't, I don't think it makes sense for anybody to have that rematch straight away. Um, certainly not Deontay Wilder. But he's probably doing it because financially it'd be stupid not to. But it, it, surely they can sit down you know, sensibly and go, right, listen, it doesn't make sense for me to do it, but if you don't do me some sort of deal where you can have a fight in between and I can have a fight in between and then I'll have it, then I'll just, and then I'll just um, make the the rematch happen. So, for whatever reason, they're going to go ahead and do it, but I just think mentally, more than physically, it'll be well too soon for Wilder. As soon as he starts getting hit with that jab and that straight right hand, he'll have nightmares all over again and there's not going to be enough time in between for the the mental scars to heal and for him to adjust, make the adjustments what he needs to do. I mean, since... Since obviously the, the second fight, Bob Arum's come out and denied it. Eddie Hearn's come out and said that they've had discussions. Obviously, Bob Arum's denied that. Um, we've got that's obviously with regards to a Fury Joshua fight. If that fight was to be made in the near future, when obviously everything's back in back in running order, how do you kind of see that fight playing out between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua? And how big a fight is that in the history of the sport? One of the biggest. I mean. How, how often have we had two heavyweights from these shows who are at the very top of the tree holding all the belts that fight's got to happen and and the promoters know that all the promoters on both sides know that fight's got to happen um, I, you see it's an intriguing fight for me I think AJ's getting better I think Tyson Fury's probably at his peak right now but AJ's getting better he's improving I mean, you know you've, you've only got to look at how long he's been boxing for to realise that there's still a lot of room for growth in, in terms of him coming on ability wise so if it can make you, if it can keep making them, them improvements I mean AJ is a good body puncher and I think you've got to be a good body puncher to have any sort of um, impact on Fiora because his head movement is so good and his, his range is so good. So you've got to be aware of the body slowing down. Um, I think Fury punches a lot harder than people realise. So he's got the power to, to trouble AJ. Um, but I think AJ is the bigger puncher in the fight. So even though I still... So I believe Fury is the number one heavyweight in the world at the moment because he's, he's, he's proven it. But... And I think... He would win a fight against AJ at this moment in time, but that, I wouldn't say that with any certainty because I still think AJ is improving. So I think it's a hell of a fight, and they need to make the fight happen sooner rather than later because you don't want it to go down the route of the Mayweather Pacquiao fights where over time you get older and it loses its value, and then they, they, they set the fight only at a point in time where it makes sense for one of them because they're on the slide. I think he's crazy. That, sh- that fight should happen now and it, it would be for the benefit of, of boxing. There, there were some talks that it might take place in Saudi Arabia. If that was to be the case, what would be your thoughts on that, Jamie? Um, sorry, I'm just eating my dinner. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, listen, I would understand if, if it took place there because at the end of the day, we do this to get paid for it and if someone if if if, if just say you're a mechanic at home and you're a big boxing fan and you're one of the people saying you can't be taking a fight like that to Saudi Arabia it's, it's crazy yeah someone walks in their garage tomorrow and said how much do you change these clubs mate and he goes 500 quid and they went well I'll tell you what if you do it for me but you do it first before you've done that one I'll give you 1500 quid his goal Absolutely, I'll take fifteen hundred quid all day of the week because that's what he gets paid to do. So, as much as I understand people's frustration about wanting to go and watch the fight if it's in London or, or wherever, they've got to understand that fighters get get paid and it's a short career. They have to get as much out of it as they can, and then that's it. So, I understand people's frustrations, but if they was in the situation what Tyson Fury and Joshua was, was in. And they was getting offered double or triple what they're going to get paid in England to go to Saudi Arabia. Then they'd do it every day of the week, and they would. 